This is Japanese scriptwriter and novelist Takeshi Shudo. Shudo was the head writer for the first five years of the Pokemon anime, as well as the first three Pokemon movies. His creative process was fueled by alcohol and tranquilizers. And in the last two years before his death, he became obsessed with the only Pokemon he ever created, Lugia. The full story behind the diving Pokemon's creation is a long and complicated story involving substance abuse, seizures, and contributions from just about every corner of Pokemon bureaucracy. To get the full picture, Did You Know Gaming searched through hundreds of Shudo's Japanese blog posts and translated everything he ever wrote about Lugia, along with some leaks and several other key documents. But before we dive into Lugia's bizarre origin story, let's talk about where Lugia wasn't created, at Game Freak headquarters. In retrospect, it almost seems inevitable that Lugia would appear in Pokemon second generation, especially since Lugia's place as Silver's box legendary is nothing short of iconic. But Lugia's inclusion in Gen 2 wasn't originally part of the plan. The earliest builds of Pokemon Gold and Silver were shown to the public only once, at Space World 1997, an E3 style gaming expo held in Japan exclusively for Nintendo products. Gold and Silver's 1997 demos were very different to the game's final build, taking place in a region based on the entirety of Japan and containing lots of Pokemon that eventually got cut from the game's final build. But after the expo, Nintendo and Game Freak locked those demos away in their vaults forever, leaving fans around the world wondering about all the secrets and lost Pokemon inside. It was one of gaming's biggest mysteries for over two decades, that is until 2018, when a hacker going by the pseudonym Wacko broke into Nintendo's servers and stole tons of development assets. Before getting arrested, the first thing they leaked was the now legendary Space World demo. Fans marveled at all the newly found lost Pokemon, but one very important Pokemon was missing from the Pokedex, Lugia. Later leaks stemming from the same hack revealed that Lugia's first appearance in Gold and Silver's development was dated June 1999. According to Shudo, that's because it wasn't Game Freak who created Lugia, it was him. He came up with Lugia specifically for the second Pokemon movie, which released one month later in July 1999. When he created Lugia, Shudo originally thought it had remained exclusive to the film. In fact, he was actually surprised when it appeared in the games at all. Toward the end of his life, Shudo wrote on his blog, Since Lugia was a Pokemon I designed myself solely for the new movie, I was surprised it ended up getting used later in the games and TV show. Actually, I thought of Lugia as a Pokemon exclusive to the movies. By modern standards, Shudo's expectation that Lugia would be a theatre exclusive Pokemon seems absurd. Of course it found its way into the games, but this was still early days days for the franchise, and series standards were still being formed. And even knowing what we know today, it's worth pointing out that there are still Pokemon forms that appear in official media but never made their way into the mainline series, like Mecha Mewtwo from Pokemon Live, Primal Dialga from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, and of course Shadow Lugia from Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. Gold and Silver's development began as soon as Red and Green were finished, with Game Freak originally saying Gen 2 would release in 1997 but their release date ended up getting delayed by a full two years, and according to Shudo, if it wasn't for that massive delay, Lugia's inclusion in Gold and Silver would have been impossible, which raises an interesting question. If that two year delay never happened, which Pokemon was originally planned as Silver's mascot? More leaks from the Wacko hack have since revealed an even earlier proto-Pokedex, in which Ho-Oh, Unknown, and a third Pokemon were all grouped together. This lost Pokemon ultimately got scrapped, but it appears to have been based on Shu Shu from Chinese mythology, also known as Lion Dogs. In China, they're considered guardians, and Shu Shu statues are often placed at the entrances of imperial palaces, temples, government offices, and the homes of the wealthy. Ho-Ho is clearly based on the Chinese phoenix, Feng Huang, which suggests this pair of Chinese-inspired legendary beasts may have been the two Pokemon Game Freak originally planned for Gold and Silver's box art. The developers themselves never commented on the leak, however, so that's all just a theory, and you'd do well to take it with a grain of salt. With the sole exception of Lugia, every other Pokemon was made in-house by Game Freak designers, and it was a unique situation that allowed Shudo, the writer of the anime and movies, the opportunity to make a Pokemon of his very own. In fact, it was only possible because of a tragedy that took place in late 1997. What fans now call the Pokemon Shock. 
The anime's 38th episode, Cyber Soldier Porygon, contained a series of flashing red and blue lights that sent hundreds of Japanese kids into fits of seizures, and hospitalized almost 700 people. In the wake of the tragedy, every Pokemon episode was pulled from the airwaves, and Pokemon executives scrambled to deal with the situation, fearing it could result in the end of Pokemon altogether. So, with all his bosses distracted, Shudo took advantage of the situation to make the first Pokemon movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back, into a much darker film than his bosses would have otherwise allowed. Shudo says his bosses would have stopped him if they had the chance, but after Mewtwo Strikes Back broke box office records and became the highest grossing Japanese film to ever release in America, Shudo was given near total creative freedom to write the second Pokemon movie, and the first thing he did was crack open a bottle of booze. After retiring from the Pokemon franchise, Shudo admitted on his personal blog that he relied heavily on alcohol and pills to write both the Pokemon anime and the movies. He talked about it a lot, but just to illustrate the extent of it all, here's just one example of the sort of thing he was writing. If I can't drink, I take tranquilizers. Of course, the ones you can normally buy in a pharmacy, not illegal substances. When I get a little bit high, it helps me sort out all my confused thoughts. However, when it comes to alcohol and drugs, you need to know your limit. Like, if I start to think that one plus one doesn't necessarily equal two, when these become difficult, it means I'm drunk. If I get any more intoxicated after that, I won't be able to think productively, and there's also the danger of tripping somewhere and hurting myself. Shudo makes it undeniably clear he was under the influence pretty much the entire time he was working on the Pokemon franchise, and went into particular detail about his intake while he was writing the Pokemon second movie. So it's fair to say that Lugia wasn't just a result of the Pokemon shock, but it was also born out of Shudo's substance abuse. Even before Shudo came up with the movie's plot, the first ideas he came up with were two main characters. The Collector, who went on to become Lawrence III, and what he called Pokemon X, a placeholder name for what eventually became Lugia. This is why, when Lugia later appeared in the anime, Dr. Namba refers to Lugia as Pokemon X. What action do you want them to take regarding the mysterious Pokemon X? According to Shudo, X was supposed to be a creature different from Pokemon, since it had to symbolize life for humans too. It's a symbol of life, but also a symbol of coexistence. Originally, Pokemon didn't have genders, but X symbolizes deep ocean currents and created life on Earth. It's a maternal Pokemon. Shudo originally wrote the movie based around Pokemon X, and purposefully excluded series regulars like Ash, Pikachu, and Team Rocket. He wasn't particularly fond of Ash, and wanted him written out of the anime, but Shudo's subordinate asked him to inject Ash into the script anyway, which he eventually agreed to as a way of showing his willingness to compromise. Pokemon X finally got an official name during an all-hands-on-deck production meeting. Staff from every corner of the franchise attended, including staff working on the film, Game Freak employees, and even distribution staff. Everyone in the meeting voted, and the winning name, of course, turned out to be Lugia. The most likely inspiration for its name is Lugia, a Latin word that means to lie down dormant, probably chosen because the first time Lugia is ever seen by the public is five minutes into the film when it's lying dormant deep under the ocean. The name might also draw partial inspiration from the beluga whale, which Lugia bears some resemblance to. Lugia's role in the story has some parallels with the great white whale in Moby Dick, with Lawrence playing the part of Captain Ahab, but it's unclear if that was actually Shudo's intention. As far as lore inspiration, Shudo may have drawn from Japanese mythology's God of the Sea, the benevolent dragon Ryujin. Not only does Lugia resemble a wyvern dragon, but in the Japanese version of the movie, Lugia is also called the god of the sea. Lugia has the power to summon storms, as does Ryujin, like when he used a hurricane to repel a fleet of Mongolian ships invading Japan. The Ryujin connection was eventually made even stronger with Lugia's shiny colors, which match those of Ryujin's legendary underwater castle. One key difference though is that while Ryujin is a male god, Shudo specifically created Lugia as a female god. But unfortunately for Shudo, Lugia ended up resembling Ryujin a little bit more than he might have intended. He created Lugia as the maternal symbol of life and deep ocean currents, but like many Pokemon, after coming up with the creature's concept, the details were out of the creator's control. Not just Lugia's name, but also its voice and gender. 
He felt strongly that as a maternal god, Lugia should have been voiced by a female actress, but the film studio went against his wishes and chose a male actor instead. In the final year of his life, Shudo wrote at great lengths about the anguish this caused him. Here's just a few excerpts from his final months. One of the regrets I have about writing the second Pokemon movie was that I didn't push back on the gender assigned to Lugia. Although its gender isn't addressed in the plot, it's given a male voice, but it's a maternal Pokemon. To make make matters worse, using a male voice actor for Lugia was a decision made during a big meeting with many participants. Advertisements had already aired. It was too late. We couldn't suddenly change Lugia into a female. But the more I thought about it, the less I could imagine X being anything else but female. I was gulping down alcohol and drugs. I started to feel like I wanted to die. Not only was Lugia voiced by a man, but it was made genderless in the games. Shudo wrote a lot about Lugia in the year before he died, but it was the loss of its maternal identity that pained him most. In late 2010, he collapsed in the smoking room of a train station and was rushed to the hospital, but tragically didn't survive. The cause of death was a subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is essentially a brain bleed whose risk factors include cigarettes and alcohol. It was Shudo's substance abuse that fueled his writing and gave birth to Lugia, but sadly, it may have also been what killed him. This brings us to the end of Shudo's story, but it's far from the end of Lugia's. To continue, we need to rewind back to Gen 2's development. The first Lugia beta sprite ever found is dated back to a month before the second movie landed in Japanese theaters. It looks nearly identical to Lugia's final design, but has six dorsal spines instead of the 10 on the finished sprite. But there's an even older beta sprite dating back to the Shushu period that may have been an even earlier form of Lugia, an unnamed boat Pokemon, now known only by its proto Pokedex number number 344. Just like Lugia, 344 appears to draw partial inspiration from plesiosaurs, a type of marine reptile that went extinct 65 million years ago, along with the dinosaurs. Some of its physical details are similar as well, especially its dorsal design, long neck, and its tail, which has led some fans to speculate that after Shudo came up with the Pokemon X concept, Game Freak might have used 344 as a springboard to come up with a brand new design that ultimately became Lugia. As an apparent non-legendary, some fans also believe 344 may have been evolutionary related to two other lost Pokemon from that version of the Protodex. However, since that particular leak lacked evolution data and the developers themselves have never commented on those lost Pokemon, any relation between Lugia and 344 is entirely speculative. It's unclear if Shudo made any sketches himself. And as a matter of fact, in 2009, Shudo said he he doesn't know who all was involved in the design process. However, we do know who to credit for Lugia's final design. Like all Gen 2 Pokemon, Game Freak's art director Ken Sugimori made Lugia's final revisions and drew the watercolor artwork that became its official design. Although it's worth pointing out that even after Lugia landed on the silver screen, which by the way became the second highest earning Japanese movie to ever hit American theaters, there was one significant detail that wasn't truly cemented and until almost a decade later. In the movie, Lugia was white with blue spikes, and its in-game sprites were white and blue as well. But Ken Sugimori actually released two contradictory pieces of watercolor artwork during Gen 2, one with blue spikes and another with black spikes. After that, Lugia's sprites switched to black in Gen 3, as well as in Gen 4's beta, but finally in Gen 4, the sprites switched back to blue spikes. This was also the case with Lugia's Gen 4 artwork. And after that, it was never seen with black spikes ever again. There's also the question of Lugia's elemental type, a topic that's caused some confusion ever since its inception. Neither the film or Shudo himself ever directly addressed Lugia's type. Although presumably when Shudo created the God of the Sea, he probably intended her as half water type. But when Game Freak went to program it into gold and silver, they ended up making it dual type psychic and flying. According to programmer and designer, Shigeki Morimoto, who's best known as the creator of Mew, Lugia was made half psychic simply because they wanted to make it strong. In the July 2009 issue of Nintendo Dream Magazine, he said, we wanted Lugia to give the impression of being a powerful Pokemon. So we settled on psychic for the second type instead of water type. In other words, Lugia is not a water type despite being underwater because due to its flying type appearance and psychic type being the symbol of a powerful Pokemon at the time. For some 
extra context to what Morimoto is saying here, it's worth noting that psychics were so powerful back in the 90s that Mew and Mewtwo were banned from all three World Cups. And even after the ban, nearly half the Pokemon used by the finalists were all psychic types. But what about Shadow Lugia? Or as it's known in Japan, Dark Lugia? It made its first, and as of the making of this video, its only appearance in the 2005 GameCube title Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. In the game, Shadow Lugia is referred to by its code name, XD001, which some fans believe is a reference to its origins as Pokemon X. Weirdly, the Pokemon company never actually said what XD stands for, so fans have been speculating for the past 15 years, whether it's Extra Darkness, Extreme Darkness, or some other abbreviation. Did you know Gaming got in contact with Tsukasa Tawada, the composer who created Shadow Lugia's theme, as well as all the music in both Colosseum and Gale of Darkness. He told us the XD actually stands for Extra Dimension, and when we asked if the developers intended XD001 as a nod to Pokemon X, he didn't seem to even know what we were talking about. Just like the original Lugia, its shadow form wasn't created by Game Freak. Both its concept and its design were made by Gale of Darkness's developers at Genius Sonority. Lugia was the only shadow Pokemon in the game to receive a unique design, whereas every other shadow Pokemon retained their standard appearance just with a purple haze. Shadow Lugia is often cited as the very first Pokemon ever designed by James Turner, the Englishman who eventually worked his way through the ranks to become Sword and Shield's art director. But just like the original Lugia, its dark side was really more of a team effort. According to James, Lugia was chosen as the star of the game by the writing team. He said he doesn't know why they chose Lugia, but presumably it's because Ho-Oh was the star of the Ore game that came before. Pokemon Coliseum. But James wasn't the guy who drew the first sketches either. It was the art director, Hiromoto Senichi, who's probably most famous as the illustrator of the Star Wars Return of the Jedi manga series. After Hiromoto hammered down the basic design, Shadow Lugia was finally handed off to James, who chose the colors and finalized the design. James also made Shadow Lugia's official art that appears on the box art, as well as the CGI cutscenes that featured Shadow Lugia. Shudo grew obsessed with Lugia, and similarly, James also had a great affection to Shadow Lugia. Both of them considered Lugia their baby, in some sense. James calls it his dark child, and occasionally laments on Twitter that he'd love to see Shadow Lugia return someday. Unfortunately, the only way to transfer Shadow Lugia to a mainline Pokemon game is by purifying it, at which point it just becomes an ordinary Lugia. Meaning Shadow Lugia is trapped forever on fans GameCube memory cards. But now that James is working Game Freak proper and has a lot more clout as the art director, maybe someday we could see Shadow Lugia finally return to the series. In 2020, the Venusaur, Charizard and Blastoise clones from Mewtwo Strikes Back made their way into Pokemon Go so Shadow Lugia might someday make a comeback as well, even if it's only in a spin-off. If you enjoyed this video, do us a favor and click the like button. We're trying something new with this video, so let us know in the comments if this is the kind of thing you'd like to see more of, or if there's something you think we could have done better. And if you want to help us some more, check out some of the videos on screen.